Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the professor, and this is the moment of truth. You know, it's just a fact that nothing happens in a vacuum under white supremacy. Today, we're going to discuss the case going on in Uganda right now where an American couple is on trial and could face the death penalty because they were torturing the black child who they had adopted. Nicholas and Mackenzie Spencer are a couple from South Carolina, and they've been charged with aggravated torture, which carries a life sentence in Uganda. They've also been charged with aggravated child trafficking, which carries the death sentence. The abuse has spanned at least two years, where they're accused of locking a child up in an empty room without clothes, food, or water. The child's body also showed signs of having been beaten. The abuse was so flagrant that it got the attention of the neighbors, who were the ones who alerted the police. The police received video evidence from a neighbor and nurse who were checking on the child. Now, people like this like to think of themselves as kind of being celebrities of a sort, especially when they go to these poor countries like Uganda. As they see it, apparently they've got some sort of special status, probably tied to their physical appearance. As they see it, the people in these poor countries are allowing them to poach the animals, get drunk in public, engage in violent criminality frequently. So why not go to the next step and go after these people's children? People like this have an unholy fixation with trying to harm black people, and they think of it as glamorous. And why not? They see people like Madonna and Charlize Theron adopting black children, and then we see how these celebrities treat these black children. Madonna uses her captive kids as her personal servants, and Charlize Theron uses the child she captured as her own personal torture doll. Now, there's nothing else that needs to be noted. This sick couple have had at least three children in their clutches since 2018. Somebody needs to be asking questions about those other kids, because there's no doubt in my mind that this latest child wasn't the first time they've done this. Now, the Spencers originally came to Uganda as so-called volunteers. They claim to be with an organization called Welcome Ministry. Yeah, that sounds like one of those fly-by-night church organizations now, don't it? And this is an MO that we see over and over and over again with these white supremacists, especially when they're going to Africa or if they're going to those countries in the Caribbean. They also come to all of those places claiming that they just want to volunteer, always in some far-off place that's got a standard of living far lower than the U.S., and they just cannot wait to go to these places. What on earth are they volunteering for? What's their cover story? Well, obviously, it's not a genuine concern for the people of these places that makes them so eager to get there, and it's not some spirit of adventure that compels them to go either. It's a spirit of depravity. This is what these white supremacists always do in these foreign countries. Haven't you ever wondered why it is that whenever a natural disaster hits one of these third world countries, or whenever a famine hits, or a civil disturbance of some sort, you always have these white supremacists who are the first in line, bags packed, at the ready, jolly in the behind to get there as soon as possible? Why is that? Why are they compelled to go to those places in particular? It's because they have the ability to go take advantage of the situation. These places have little to any communications infrastructure and no political influence, and they also don't have to be too worried about their misdeeds getting back to the folks back home even if they get caught. Well, at least most of the time they don't have to worry about it. So they can just go into these places, and they usually make a beeline straight for the children. That's why so many times we hear about a flood or some sort of unrest in these areas, and then you got groups like the UN peacekeepers who go in, or these so-called NGOs, that is non-governmental organizations, or these religious groups like Welcome Ministry who go into these places. And then months or even years later, we hear that these people were raping the children and these religious organizations were torturing the children. They go to these places because they're far from home, and they figure nobody can see them engaging in their sick, depraved, demonic behavior. See, what Charlize Theron and Madonna are doing, it's not some victimless crime. It's not harmless. It encourages the Spencers and other trash to go and do the exact same things. Now, should these two degenerates be convicted and sentenced to death, how much you want to bet the U.S. government will come riding to the rescue, demanding that they not be executed? Last thing they want is anyone getting the idea that suburban reprobates like the Spencers get caught committing crimes and, well, the law should actually be allowed to touch them. 
And don't be surprised if you see some of these white Hollywood celebrities sticking up for them before it's all over. We'll continue with the moment of truth in just a moment, but first, a word from the official sponsor of Black Empowerment, Power Tools. There's no telling when something's going to come up, so make sure you carry your power tools at all times. You never know when you're going to need to bring the hammer down, or when you'll have some trash that needs to be blown away, or some obstacle that requires cutting down. Don't get caught empty-handed. Keep your hammer close by. Keep that leaf blower at the ready. And always carry your steel. Power Tools. Because no matter what your day job or side hustle may be, there's no excuse for not being ready to put in some work. Now, I consider it particularly ironic that this incident happened in Uganda. Remember, Uganda was the home of Idi Amin. And I'll tell you right now, I was the one who made the classic video, The Truth About Robert Mugabe. I was the first person anywhere to openly challenge the white media narrative about Mugabe and explain where the sudden hatred for Robert Mugabe from the white media really came from. And I know a lot of you have probably seen the movie The Last King of Scotland, but from what I've learned of Idi Amin, it's pretty much rinse and repeat the same thing they did with Mugabe. Just with a couple of variations on the theme, they wanted to really dirty Idi Amin up. And the reason why was Idi Amin not only stood up to the white rulership of that country, but then the Asians, specifically Indians who the British had brought in as a buffer class, when they began treating the Ugandans just like the British had, Idi Amin had them deported. As a result, the Europeans and the Asians had a bone to pick with Uganda ever since. Keep in mind, the last and current Home Secretaries in Britain have been Indians. And it was Pretty Patel who was laughing and happy and giddy as all get out when she instituted the Tory party's policy of forced deportation of African migrants to Rwanda. That's what they were doing, putting people on planes and say, we're going to fly you to Rwanda if you come to Britain. Pretty Patel is gone. She had to leave when Boris Johnson was forced to resign, but her successor, Suella Braverman, says she dreams of deporting asylum seekers. Both of those two talk about black people like dogs, and they take a particularly perverted glee in any sort of ability they have to use their government posts to harm or otherwise to disadvantage black people. So please don't think that in the case of those two Indian Britain politicians, Idi Amin is far from their minds, because he's not. We hear a lot about black migrants coming to Europe, but there's more white people living in Africa than there are black people living in Europe. That's something you're not going to hear the white media telling you. So to see Uganda in particular exercising power over white citizens is something that won't sit well with the bigots in the British government or in the U.S. The only thing they hate worse than black people throwing them out of these countries are black people informing them that they won't be allowed to leave. You're not going to see them praising the Ugandans for stopping child trafficking and torture. And you know what else you won't see? You won't see Ben Affleck or any of these other white Hollywood celebrities doing any Coney 2012 nonsense, or in this case, Spencer's 2022 nonsense, for these two child torturers. It's people like the Spencers who are killing endangered species in Africa, but nobody's making that kind of connection either. Speaking of connections, I'm going to make another one right now. We will never stop demonic individuals like the Spencers until we first stop these African governments from showing them more respect than they do for other black people, including their own. Black people from the United States cannot get any sort of resources or cooperation with those governments in Africa. We show nothing but respect for the people, their culture, their customs, and we are never involved in harming children in those places. Yet whenever we show up and say, hey, why don't we have a little co-action, they turn us down flat. There is no African nation that has any sort of right of return policy for black Americans. Meanwhile, the child torturers from South Carolina are let right in and they're living over there and allowed to stay as long as they want. Keep in mind, the Spencers are supposed to be working for a private company, but their work permit expired last year. These white supremacists receive a special dispensation in the very countries whose people they subjugated and killed with impunity for so long. If it seriously starts to look like the Ugandans are going to go for a capital punishment sentence against the Spencers, then the U.S. is going to step in to object. Maybe not openly, but they're going to do it. And the U.S. won't be alone. Other European countries, like Britain, will be doing the same. And so will the Asian countries. 
You'll recall that a few months back, there was that Chinese national who had been in Malawi. He claimed that he was teaching the children how to speak Chinese, but in reality, he was teaching them to say derogatory phrases about themselves. And then this sick freak was taking the video of his perverted acts and selling them online and making tens of thousands of dollars off of it. Do you think that those were just white supremacists paying him for those videos? No. There's a lot of Asians who also paid for them as well. Voice of America reported that he was selling his videos on a Chinese website for $70 a piece. Some of the children have also accused him of physically abusing them as well. Now, this creep, you'll recall, fled to Zambia, but the Malawian authorities requested that he be extradited back to stand trial, and the Zambians complied, though not before making him pay an almost $800 fine for illegal entry and illegal stay. Currently, this child molester is awaiting trial where he faces five counts of child trafficking, money laundering, and procurement of children to perform in public, as well as a cybersecurity crime. He's been denied bail, and of course, the Chinese embassy is saying that they condemn racism in any form, blah, 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 and they're going to be working closely with the Malawi government to help address this incident. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of when Peter Liang murdered a Kai Gurley. There were behind-the-scenes discussions in that incident, too, and all of it about making sure that the criminal never got punished. While it's good that the Africans are at least putting these three animals on trial, the real question will be, A, will they have the stones to convict them or allow their respective home governments to get them off the hook? And B, will they follow through on capital punishment in the case of the Spencers if convicted? Or are they going to be trying to find a way to thread the needle to do just enough so they can tell their own citizens, look, uh, we took these crimes very seriously. But not enough where the white leadership of the U.S. or the Asian leadership in China are going to have to see black people exercising power over their citizens. The Africans' track record on this is consistently inconsistent. They've arrested the occasional white gun runner or terrorist, but as often as not, they've allowed them to talk their way out of punishment or allowed their home countries to do it for them. And keep in mind, these are the people who are claiming that they're going to be helping to build and develop Africa. This is their idea of development. It's often been said that the children are the future. But that being the case, a people who do not protect their children and who do not punish those who harm their children are also a people who will have no future. Good day and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Ogheneru Imo Asa, Jacques Hargett, Joy Henderson, Stephen Mugisa, and Kawi Harvard. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.